This is a hinged stiff rig. Seems somewhat out of favor with a lot of anglers or for those of you that are new to the angling world, you may not have seen this before because the Ronnie rig seems to be the going pop-up presentation. But what if you don't want to have a pop-up just an inch off the deck, but you want it slightly higher up and fish something that has loads of movement like this, this is fundamentally a chod rig on the end of a boom. Well, that's where the hinged stiff rig comes in. It's a rig that I've used in my armory for many years. Not for a while now, actually, not really sure why, because it's actually a rig that I caught my first ever 30 pounder on. So it's a rig that I know works very, very well. And you can see why there's a lot of separation from the deck and also that hook bait can move in all directions it doesn't matter what direction a carp comes at this rig it will pick it up and it will flip that hook round and dig into the bottom lip so where would you fish with a hinge stiff rig well essentially on more clear bottoms or slightly silty slightly weedy but nothing too weedy because you're using a stiff boom section which we're using today if you use this in heavy weedy situations or deep silt you might find that the boom kicks up slightly differently so you would use this on a predominantly clear bottom or with something with not much around but you want to still fish a pop-up presentation over the deck rather than something that's on the bottom or wafting around so let's see how we tie these up well with me today i've got another load of Gemini tidy booms with me. These are dedicated for the hinged stiff rig. You get three in a pack and the price starts from £4.9 and in here is either five and a half inch in length, seven inch in length or nine inch in length. So it's completely up to you on what length boom you want to go with but I'm going to be using the five and a half inch ones today because I like to keep my rigs fairly short. Now these booms are 100% fluorocarbon. In basic terms it's virtually invisible in water that's one of the benefits of fluorocarbon it's got a lovely rigidity to it so that it kicks away as the name suggests with booms it will make sure that rig always resets nicely it kicks away from the lead so there's always that separation but it's not so stiff that there's not enough movement in it so there's a nice balance there they actually come in 30 pound breaking strain and as you can see from top and bottom it's the same with all the different tidy booms in the range they are fused loops and this is much stronger than any kind of regular knot or any knot you try and tie because a knot in its nature has to grip onto itself at some point and that will cause a slight weakness whereas this has been fused together there is no weak points you've got 30 pound breaking strain all the way through and in testing before i've actually found they can sometimes go a bit higher than that but it's rated at 30 pounds so super strong and super reliable so that is the booms that we're going to be using today and on the very end of these ones in particular there is a size 11 spinning swivel and that's what gives loads of movement from the hinge bit at the very end. So there's no need to tie up loads of loops, make your own hinge points. It's all ready to go. So the pit we have to tie is actually very, very simple. So to start with, get your chod filament or whatever material you want to use. Chod filament in nature is quite high memory, quite difficult to work with at times. So I have got my kettle with me because that makes tying some of these bits up slightly easier. And then of course, using a thicker or more rigid material the hook pattern you're going to want to use is a choddy. So let's get one of those out. Now, once you've got these two items, what you want to do is tie the hook on with a knotless knot, but leaving a tag end at the bottom, maybe an inch or two, to give you a nice, nice amount to work with once you've done it. And the knotless knot is completely up to you. This is how big you're going to make the D. I tend to whip down the shank of the hook about 10 times with these size four hooks, because that gives me the perfect D size. And it also lines up perfectly with the point of the hook so once i'm level with the point of the hook that's me done and i tuck the line back through the eye the way it came in and pull that down tight and as i said this has quite a lot of memory to it so to make these knots a bit more snug we're going to be using the steam in a second anyway i like to put the kettle on and steam each of the knots at each stage to make them nice and neat and nice and snug down so we're going to quickly put the kettle on there we go get my rig puller so i don't burn myself put that on the hook start pulling that knot down nice and tight with the steam you find that this makes the chod filament that you're using which is pretty stiff and hard to work with much more malleable because obviously the, the natural properties of the heat means that it goes much more supple so i'm pulling that down a bit of tension under the heat let it cool off there we go and that is really really neatly snugged down and i've got the tag end turn that kettle off again I've got the tag end exiting the back of the knotless knot perfectly central. You want to make sure that everything you're tying on this rig is as neat as possible because the more central you make all the lines, the better the way the rig is going to work. The mechanics of the rig works really well when it's all symmetrical. So it pays to be a little bit more 
time consumed with this or a bit more uh, anal about how you get these knots tied down. But in the end, you will have a much more effective rig. And this is the fiddliest bit because now I've got to add how I want to attach my hook base. Now this is completely up to you whether you use a micro hook ring swivel or if you're a bit more lazy like me, I like to use a hook ring screw because they're much easier just to change your hook bait. I'm not often fishing very long so it's not like I'm worried that the pop-ups are going to start to degrade over time. If I was using longer sessions or on longer sessions, I want to leave a hook maybe out for longer, perhaps a screw wouldn't be the way to go. I use a hook ring swivel or just a hook ring to make sure that I floss on baits so there's less risk of water ingress. Now what I've done there is attached that screw to the tag end and then tuck the tag end back through the eye, pulled it all through, trimmed down the tag end and then just blob that down with a lighter. dab it to stop that from pulling through. Now this is where you can test with yourself how big you want to have that D section. I like to have them fairly small because once that's sat up and popped up you'll find that the pop-up is naturally already quite separated from the hook so that looks about perfect for me and that is pretty much the most difficult bit done. The next part is to grab the tidy boom which you've already got out the packet. There's actually been over a million of these sold worldwide and you can understand why because they're so easy to use and they're super neat at the end. Go to the swivel end and attach the line through the last eye on that swivel. Now this is the point where you'll choose how much you want your rig to pop up because if I put that swivel really close to the eye it's going to be a bit more fiddly to try and tie it up but it will mean that the pop-up will be less off the deck but I'm going to go for a couple of inches off the deck makes it a bit easier to tie up on camera as well and I like to kink the line ever so slightly through the swivel because it makes it hold in place. All of this memory will be forgotten when I turn the kettle on again in a second and not wise Again, it's up to you what you find works, what's easiest. I've always used a three turn blood knot and never had it fail on me. And it's one of the more easy ones to tie. So around that once, twice, three times with a super sh sharp choddy hook like this, you probably will end up getting stabbed a few times. Use your mouth if you need to, and then pass that back through the initial loop we made when we started that blood knot. Start to pull it down, but don't go all the way. That's nearly snug down, but as I've said, because this material is quite hard to work with when it's in its cold state, like this quite cold state and windy, I need to get some heat into this knot to make it bed down really nice and snug. So once again, I'm gonna put my kettle on, get my puller tool, attach one end, and another one on the loop at the far end of the boom. Make sure my hands are nice and away from all that steam. I've got the knot semi-bedded down There's not much more movement to go, but with that heat, just apply the pressure and you'll see with that pressure you're putting on, as that steam starts to get into the knot, it just slowly beds itself down and it's far neater than you'd ever get it if you were trying to do that without any kind of steam. This also gets rid of any memory in the chod filament, so I can pull that nice and tight and that's now done. Once again, turn the stove off, but I will use it one more time in a little bit but that's now dead straight coming off of that boom so I'm going to trim down the tag end and just for my own peace of mind I like to blob that little tag as well just in case there's any potential future slip I've then got that blobbed bit of knot to save me there we go and it just neatens it up ever so slightly so that is pretty much the tying up process done but we want to put a nice bit of a curve in there and also add the hook bait but to put the hook the curve in there you could sit here and do this get some heat into the filament and just slowly tease it into a curve which I have done there that's quite a nice little curve but I've actually found a neat little trick is if you've got a braid spool or something I've actually got bait floss spool here I just stick the hook down into the middle of that spool push it down nice and tight and then pull the filament round the outside of this spool. And that gives it a really nice regimented perfect curve. Now, I probably should have left the kettle on because I'm gonna have to turn it on once more. And once again, we're gonna add some heat to this filament, but it's already got that curve in there through the spool that I've put it onto. So if I just hold that nice and tight against the spool, get my fingers out of the way so I don't burn them against the steam. Starting to get that heat in there to remove the memory of that being straight. And once it's nice and warm, 
take it off the heat, cool it down, turn the stove off for the last time, and take that out of the bait floss. And there we have an absolutely perfect, really smooth, regimented curve, which is what I like to have on this rig, because as I said, if you can be really finessed with it, it makes the rig mechanics work a lot more smoothly. I'm gonna add my hook bait now. As I've said, I'm using a bait screw. It's a lot easier to add a hook bait with a bait screw. If you're using bait floss, that's how you'd floss a bait on. You can either tie that on or pierce the bait, pull the floss through and blob it down. It's completely up to you how you add your hook bait depending on how you set it up. But as quick as that, I've now got a hook bait on, which is why I love using bait screws. And lastly, if that was a very buoyant pop-up, I'd need to put some kind of putty on it. If this was perfect enough with just that swivel, happy days, but it's very unlikely. With a hinge stiff rig, you tend to want to use a really buoyant pop-up because this rig works best when that is bolt upright. It's pinned down here with some kind of weight, which we'll get onto in a second, but it needs that movement to go around. And it relies on having a really strong buoyant pop-up to keep that rig up for as long as possible and help it to do its job, spinning around and turning into that fish's bottom lip. But we do want to add some putty. Now this is open to debate as to where you want to add the putty because people decide to put it in various different places. One spot would be to wrap it around just above the swivel on the hinge rig itself where that knot is and it does neaten things up so that is one option to do it. But I prefer to do it on the fused part of the loop on the boom. The boom is what's kicking away and this doesn't matter really where it gets pinned down but I find that that's going to be pinning it down enough and it leaves that swivel completely free and everything else I've tied up to do its own thing, to do its job and not being hindered by any kind of extra putty or anything else on that line. That's as delicate as it can be, but I've still got that weight on the fused part of the boom to keep it pinned down. So there is your hinged stiff rig. Lead arrangement wise, you could use this on a lead clip if you wanted, but I think it's more likely to be used on a helicopter setup or something like that, where you can fly back, have complete free movement, to land exactly where it wants away from the lead and as I said with that boom it always wants to reset itself even if you get an aborted take it will reset itself and rest assured as long as you've got a really buoyant pop-up on there that's still attached that's going to reset and be sitting perfect for you every single time the anti-tangle properties of using a boom like this are just amazing I'm trying to bend it back on itself and it's constantly kicking itself away from itself so it's not like it's going to tangle up and it just gives you the most assurance that you're fishing effectively for as long as possible with a rig like this. So when you wind in, or hopefully with a fish on the end, you know it's done its job. So that is the hinged stiff rig, and more specifically, the booms that I've used are the tiny booms for hinged stiff rigs. Available in five, five and a half inch, seven inch, or nine inch in length. And as I said, the prices start from four pound nine p for three. So for more information, do head over to the Gemini website. That is the hinged stiff rig. Give it a try, and hopefully you'll get some fish on the bank with it.